Hello and welcome to Magathea Builder Worlds. So this is part two of a Carnivali patron build. Carnivali, oh yes. What's that then? Well, this this is Carnivali. Look at that, what a pro. Got the book up the right way around first time this time. Carnivali is a tabletop skirmish game made by TT Combat. It's a, a kind of like mashup of Van Helsing, Assassin's Creed and Call of Cthulhu all in one go. It's designed to be played on a table that could be as small as two foot by two foot. You need loads of scenery. Conveniently you can get quite a lot of the scenery from TT Combat. They also make the miniatures. But I'm making a model for Carnivali as a Patreon prize. One of my patrons, nice chap called Ant, uh, uh, entered the competition, suggested I'm building a model for Carnivali. Uh, and this is what we're going for. Now, this is where it is. This is what it's got to. Oh, look, there's a Rashar crabby kind of baraki yaki thing on it. Um, this is where we're at so far. So colonnades, um, we're gonna have a covered market, then we're gonna have we've got balconies here, we're gonna have first floor, then we're gonna have a bit on top, then we're gonna have this cupola on the very top of that. Um it's gonna look oh, I'll tell you what, it's gonna look like this. Uh, if you're watching this as part two, you probably watched part one. If you haven't watched part one while we're on it, actually um Go and watch part one, there's no point watching part two if you haven't watched part one. But if you did watch part one, you probably noticed there was a bit missing. <coughs> In part one, I talk about this is what it's going to look like. Um, <laughs> and then I forgot to insert a graphic or a sketch or anything else to show you what I had in mind. This is the original drawing I did. Um, I think uh, so. It goes. Um, can we see that? So that look, that was the plan, and it was going to be completely square on top, and it was going to jutty, sticky out balconies, and this first floor was going to go all the way to the front of the colonnade. Uh, you could see a uh, terrible drawing. Maybe you can. Can you see? Terrible drawing here of a stained glass window. It's going to go in the back there. Um, I have changed a few things, mind you. This this is the front elevation. Originally there was just a door on a balcony there. Now that balcony, of course, goes all the way across the model, and it's set back so the side elevation is different now because this wall here uh, is going to be shorter because the balcony takes up loads of that. But anyway, look, I did actually do. So this is just proof. I'm only waving this around here like this, um, just to prove to you, I did actually do some drawing before we can't like, set out there. Uh, the drawing came about after a conversation with Ant about what we thought this building ought to look like. Um, it's not even my bloody dog, God's sake. But uh, yeah, the plan, the plan is to make this building and, and, and to, for uh, TT Combat buildings to feature on his table, but then to have hero buildings, which is what I very much want to do for mine as well. So some feature buildings that are scratch built. So what's going to happen in uh, this video then? Well, this video might not be as long as the last video, who knows? But then again, going to ramble in my shed. All fans of middle-aged British blokes sat in his shed rambling and talking nonsense to his mates, being the peak of being British. Thank you for that comment, by the way, last time. Um, here we go again. Um, what are we going to do? Well, like I said, we've got to add uh, the first floor um, and add the uh, second floor, which is only going to be a small room, and then add the cupola to the top of that. Um, and then, of course, we're going to paint it. Uh, then, this video then is also going to feature a number of other things. The cupola, like other bits, I have uh, 3D printed. Um, 3D printed windows, 3D printed doors, because that just speeds up the whole process, is what I like about 3D printing. Um, and I'm also going to, what we're going to do, oh yes, uh, this is going to see me trying out. Dirty down the degree. If you've seen my recent Necromunda uh, sump builds, you will have seen me using a dirty down rust, which I thought was an amazing product, witchcraft in a bottle. Uh, and a number of people said to me, You should try the verdigree. So I'm going to do that. So the top of the cupola is going to be painted metallic and then it's going to get all kind of verdigreed up as well. So that's the plan. Um, hopefully. We'll be able to crack on. The first thing I need to do then is make the first floor. The first floor is going to be made from 10 millimeter thick XPS foam. Um, and I'm going to work out the doors can go central. It's going to have windows. <gasps> oh, good sake. And I've got to decide actually what's happening down below here with my door in the back, which I might just fill in, um, and staircases and stuff. It doesn't really need staircases because you know. Uh, but it needs staircases because you've got to be able to get from the ground up here. Um, but yeah. So, without further ado, 
let us turn to the XPS phone and uh, get measuring, drawing, cutting out, out and uh, of course wielding the extra strong kitchen foil. Get to that in a minute. Cool, okay, let's crack on. Now, one of the problems I've got with this model is that on the first floor, I wanted to have stairs come up to it. My original idea was that I was gonna have, here we are, my original idea was I was gonna have a, uh, an archway here that you can see, I've cut it in. Um, and then I was gonna have a set of stairs here and a set of stairs here, like a door here, and a set of stairs going up, and a door here and a set of stairs going up. Problem with that is it's not at all practical. The doors wouldn't work and it all looks stupid and I was a bit annoyed. And I've kind of, didn't really think that through very well and I cut the damn hole in there, first of all. Um, and now I'm numbered with it. I've got that hole in the back. And I don't really want it there. I do want a hole in that back wall because what I don't necessarily want is a, a great big eight inch long stretch of wall which offers up loads and loads of cover. There should be kind of some jeopardy in running across it at some point. And uh, uh, actually, Ant got in touch with me. We were talking about how the model was looking. You know, it was coming on. Looks nice. Thanks, mate. I'm glad you're pleased. Um, and he suggested, why don't you just take the original bit of foam you take, took out, stick it back in the hole. This might not be the original, but the, all the arches are the same size. Uh, so you get that. All right, okay, so we fill in the hole. We've got a bit of gap around it. But then what's cool is you could kind of like draw on, and this is what I like the idea, the, the idea I like, is we draw on now into, into the foam um, brickwork. So we draw the brickwork on, so it looks like there was an archway there and it's been bricked up and the archway's been moved, which is a completely legit thing that you'd get doing buildings. So I really like that as an idea. So I'm gonna take that bit of uh, 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 XPS, the arch that I cut out, and I'm gonna draw brickwork so work onto it and stick it into the hole. Even if the rest of the wall is plastered and rendered, it will look quite kind of neat. It will certainly be a talking point anyway, so we'll see what that looks like. Um, so I'm gonna give that a go before I do the first floor. All right, here we go then, look, check it out. I don't know how clearly we can see that. That is now definitely walled in. I haven't stuck it in yet, but it's got brickwork all the way across it. Uh, and I'll end up sticking that in. That'll look kind of cool, because it's definitely been a walled up arch. Now all I've got to do is find the goddamn temple, the template, 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 template. Now all I've got to do is find the template to make me arch doors, and I'm gonna stick an arch door in here instead. And then I can have all of this space here for my staircase. I think. Yeah, let's do that. Ta da! Okay. <laughs> Here we have a uh, wall, walled up, new, new archway cut in. Um, I'll put a bit of filler in round there to make it look like it's all been concreted in properly or cemented in. And then in here, I'm going to have a set of stairs going up to be first floor. Problem solved. Good idea, Ant, thank you very much. That worked really, really well, I think. Well, we'll tell how, how well it really works at the end of the model, but it looks like it's gonna be pretty good. So I am happy with that. It's just smear me glue around on the inside of it, so it doesn't look quite so much like glue. It's done quite a good job of filling the gaps on the inside. What's cool is where the staircase goes, there'll be a bricked up wall, which will be quite neat, so I like that. Right, um, yeah, and okay, so I'm gonna do the the staircase. I think I'm still going to go with the suggestion I had last time, which was use bits of the cut-out XPS foam to make the stairs. I just needed a room, a run of it, long enough to make it interesting. So I'm going to cut up a bunch, make some stone stairs, put in a wall and another wall with a door. One, two, three, four. The whole point of doing this was the fact that the whole point of doing this was the fact that there's a corridor then that's gonna have a door that will go to the upstairs, which is cool. Right, good. Check this out first of all, before we go any further. Stairs, in. Uh, huh, didn't carve any stairs going down there, but that's cool. So that's what it, how it ended up. There's the door at the bottom, look. There's the door the other way round. Quite pleased with that. So there's now an archway in there and there's a door and stuff. It's good and I've done it so actually stairs help lock first floor in place. So now I'm gonna make the walls of the first floor. I have already 
marked out on here for three and three and a half inch walls. Um, I now need to texture these. So here we go. Mix the texture tin foily rolly roll. We now this works. And if you don't burn out, where the hell have you been? Uh, I'm taking my tin foil roll. And I'm basically rolling all over uh, the wall section. Uh, if I haven't said it before in this video, um, this help partly compresses the XPS, makes it a bit more rigid, also gives it a more interesting texture when we come to painting it, which is good. This building is going to be rendered brickwork, so I'm not adding much in the way of brick detail and the like to it. And when I've done this, I'm going to do the whole thing only one go, it's just easier. I'll work out where the windows are going, I'll work out how long each bit needs to be to make the various walls. I'll stick that to the first floor base and that'll be it, job done. Now, I, what I am doing um, with this model, I think, is not doing things like having removable doors. The door at the bottom of the staircase is just stuck into the XPS foam. I'm being too flipping fiddly really. Just another bit you can lose. Which is fine. There we go. How's that coming? Oh, that's cool. Now I'm going to do the other side. We're on the inside of the mold. Now, granted, not many models are being made for Carnival here. We're going to um, come apart, but this one is a big one. And there's plenty of room to fight inside it, so I'm going to have an interior. So let's flip that over to this side. Yeah, come back in a minute, you've seen me, haven't you? Blimey. Okay, so look, what I have managed to do whilst making this uh, video and doing this and making models of other people is actually get into painting some uh, kind of only figures. This is uh, from the Rash Art faction. It's a kind of sharky, beasty thing that's named. Completely skips my mind. Quite nice. Um, chewing a, a dead kind of like Venetian uh, on a nice resin cast uh, cobblestone base that one and then this one also Rashar because that's the first faction I'm doing painting the Rashar because actually I'm rather hoping that because um, my wife was into nids and all sorts of other things in the past and kind of various kind of beasties I'm hoping that I could be able to tie her back into playing tabletop games with a whole bunch of monsters and stuff so this is the kind of like the crab beast thing uh, which is a really nice model I really enjoy painting this one I've got to be careful with how old it is because it's got resin in the sunken bits of the uh, resin cast base, so that's going to have water in it. Uh, bloody fiddly model mind you, especially as there were no instructions as to how the legs work, so I had to kind of sit and just look at two pictures on their website, fiddle around with that so it worked. What else we painting? We're also painting more Rushar here, here he is kind of like coming along, needs loads of detail on that. Two Rushar lesser Uctrus I think these are called. I think Heidi's going to like these because this is pretty much the Cthulhu-esque nature of this game, there we go, they're kind of cool. Um, and then a Rush Arm Magi, which is kind of 
on the way as well. So I'm quite enjoying painting those. And after actually painting my own figures is kind of kind of cool. Hey, go me. Um, and then I might have bought one of them. I might have. Well, I've got the guild figures from the box set to uh, uh, be getting on with. And then around here somewhere, um, there is a in this box right in front of me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There is a Vargalac. It's the werewolf. There he is. No boys and girls, I didn't only buy the Vargalac figure, which is for the Strigoi faction, which I haven't got any other figures for. I didn't only buy the Vargalac because of the Power Wolf song. Vargalac. Um, all right, I might have done, actually, but you know. Um, so we've got the stuff to paint, which is all cool. It's coming along very nicely. Um, and then uh, for shits and giggles, uh, recently I acquired this big boy, bad boy as well. This has got nothing to do with Carnival. I'm just showing off now. Look, 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 look. You see that? See that? Nice. Check him out. That is Bristle Nose the Troll from Moonstone. Just because I really liked it as a model. So I might even get around to painting him. Who knows? That could be fun. Moonstone looks like another very dangerous game to get into. Do you play Moonstone? Do you play Moonstone? Have you got figures for Moonstone? Um, is it another game I should cover? A little niche game on my channel? What do you reckon? Is it as bonkers as it looks? I can't, I mean, you know. One of my problems with a lot of these games is actually sitting down and reading all the lore and getting into all the stories and all the rest of it, which of course is what I love because I love narrative games, but you look at it and go, oh my god, it's got this bewildering array of characters. And, um, yeah, there's so much out there. And actually my problem in some ways that I'm still hesitant about Carnivale with and with Moonstone is there are other people's characters they are all kind of made up. So what I love, love, love about Burrows and Badgers is the fact that, you know, apart from the... They're all right, they're different species and yada yada, but they're my made up gangs and names, and I can convert the figures and the rest of it. I haven't seen a lot of opportunities so far in the Carnivale range for figure conversion and adding stuff to it, but we'll see. Early days here. Anyway, back to the cutting up of the now textured XPS foam. I'm not going to bore you with the details of how I cut up foam. You've seen me do it quite a lot, especially as I don't have a brox on. So I'm just doing it with a bloody sharp scalpel. Oh, um, Tim, safety talk. Bloody sharp scalpel. There it is. New blade for cutting. Make sure you use new sharp blade. They're safer than old dull blade. Right, far less likely to cut yourself. Okay, so uh, where are we? It's going to move these whimsical figures out of the way. Moonstone, much whimsy. Um, however, having said that, uh, Carnivale, lots of whimsy in a pretty bloody brutal kind of manner, mind you. The whimsy of Moonstone is all kind of fairy and, and fae and kind of pretty. They're uh, lovely looking models. The figures for Carnivale are lovely looking figures, but there's a bit more ah, horror to them, which I like. All right, okay, so, um, yeah, look, I'll, what's going to happen now, right, is I'm going to cut out these four, there are four walls here. I'm going to measure them. Uh, I've already drawn on where the front door's going. I'm going to work out where a few other windows are going to go, like the back window, which is going to have the stained glass window in it, um, over the doorway, and then I'm going to kind of, stick them on i reckon the next bit of this video is going to have four stuck on walls i'm not making any apologies for that here we go see you in a moment in the meantime i'm going to watch uh heath ledger and uh matt damon in um what's it called it's called uh brothers grim because that's all fantasy and whimsical too brothers grim is like or i'm a fantasy role play on the screen great that and the movie Hansel and Gretel as well which has even got an ogre in it and like repeating bolt throws and all kinds of shit too. and a fantasy diabetic which is just I still think one of the funniest things in any movie ever um anyway let's uh right look I've done that now cut out that wall see you lot in a minute this is the uh the front wall then you can see the door I've cut in uh, and the two windows. There is some gap around the door. Really hard to cut this exact to shape. Um, so I'm going to get some uh, filler and fill the gaps so there are no gaps there. Um, I've cut out 
back wall, roughly the same length. This will have three windows with shutters in. There we go, look. They're going to go in there. Um, not, you'll note, the uh, stained glass window that was on the original drawing. Um, and that I talked about. But, uh, because I decided where the stained glass window should go in the back wall would be just right kind of above where the staircase was and it was going to look a bit crap. So what I decided to do is in the two side walls, I'm going to put a stained glass window facing each other. This one already cut the hole out. And the stained glass window is two MDF, MDF, not MDF it's printed, two printed windows that will go back to back. Um, and I will then put some acetate in between the two and colour it. Just like I did when I did the um, uh, Red Wall Abbey all that time ago uh, for Burroughs and Badgers. That was a bigger window. So these are smaller. Just found again this STL on uh, Thingiverse. Printed it. Takes about an hour to print a pair of these. So I've got four of these. I'm going to have uh, S, uh, stained glass windows opposite each other. So I'm nearly there with that. I've got to cut out <coughs> the hole on this one to do that, match that. Uh, and I've got to stick those windows on the back. And then that's the first floor I can stick on. Once I've stuck the first floor walls on and they are stuck, I'm then going to put uh, bolts of wood in there uh, as the flooring. I could draw the floor on, but actually it's a hell of a lot easier to do it in balsa wood. So I'm going to do a balsa wood floor in there and then I'll work out how the roof's going to go. This part of the model is coming on quite quick. Right, let's uh, stick some more windows in. Not going to stick these windows in uh, until I've uh, done the whole thing. So that will be, uh, and they'll fit in the holes better because it's a complete round circle to cut them out. So I'll undercoat those uh, and paint them um, separately. Stick the acetate in, colour in the acetate, put the back on, then I'll be able to stick those in place. We'll have a look at those in a little while. Okay, that's before wall's done now. I showed you the front wall, I've still got this filling, but what well, I've had this cool cutting plan because I could 3D print as many windows as I like and they take extra no time. And they look much better. I have actually double-sided these windows here so they're detailed on the inside and on the outside they look pretty neat i haven't bothered putting i haven't bothered glazing these there's no point doing that that's just daft but you know um they look kind of cool because this one on the back wall i put shutters in these two uh and this one's open but then on the inside of course the back of the shuttered windows let's just see if i can find one it's just um entirely blank like that which would look a bit weird when it's in the model so I thought I oh, know I'll put windows in there um, so I'll shut them uh, so shut it on one side window on the other looks really really neat I like it uh, and then of course I've got both the windows for my stained glass windows as well so that's kind of cool too so we're happy with that uh, I'm gonna stick these on the model uh -huh. Okay, so I'm at the point where I now have uh, these four walls all stuck on, which is great. And what have I done so far? I've cut out the roof. Good to go on here. Uh, I've drawn on this uh, foam, the uh, four, actually more than, but four sections are going to make up the tower that sit on the top that the cupola is going to sit on. And on this bit of foam, whoops, oh, I've drawn out what are going to become uh, the sides. There we go, I've drawn out the sides of what's going to become the top of that. Um, I just take it for granted now that I'm going to wield the baking foil that I've flipping lost because I cleared up I cleared up in here last night, I came in here last night not that it makes any, you know, what night is what difference to you guys watching this but I came in here last night and I, I cleared up some baking foil and now I took, hang on, wait a minute under the desk, Tim, under the desk, what's that? Yeah, so take it from me that um, I'm now going to take this baking foil. I'm going to do exactly what I've done in other videos so you don't need to see it again. I'm going to make a sausage of baking foil like that uh, 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 and I'm going to texture all this foam, all those bits, and you don't need to see me doing that or cutting it out really, pretty much sticking it together. Um, 
I mean, I might video bits of it if it's interesting, but frankly, me rolling tinfoil over a bit of foam, it's not that exciting, is it really? So, um, hang on, we might jump to a bit where I've got something built. You never know. See you in a minute. Okay, so here's the roof textured. Uh, I've done the towery bits. Um, you can probably see the texture on there. Uh, I'm not going to tee the inside because I don't think I'm actually going to make it possible to put figures on the inside. I'm just going to make it into a box. Um, and then the walls for the top, both sides, because you can see both sides right. So, next job, now I've textured this floor. I'm not bothering doing the bottom underside. Uh, I'm going to draw stonework on it. It's going to have a stone roof, um, which would be cool. And then I'm going to put walls on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the walls. The walls are an inch thick. I don't know how well we can see that, wait a minute, let's just let that zoom in there, okay, there we go. The walls, are these walls bits are an inch thick, um, and I'm going to chamfer them a little and then hang them over the edge of the floor, so they actually hang down um, around the top of the building, just a little bit, and that way there, not much because the windows go quite high, but that will hold that, help hold that ceiling on play, in place. Um, and also it might cover up any uh, old gaps and lines and bits and pieces where the where the model sits and the way everything bends so that's what we're going to go for we'll see how it works so first job draw the roof paving slabs on the roof hurrah let's do that and then i'm going to cut the walls out okay so i'm cutting each wall and i fit it on three onto the roof and i've glued here um, and what I'm using, I'm going to use, uh, this is 10mm section square bolster that's going to go in the corners uh, and that's going to provide a, a corner for everything to butt up against but just to make the roof a little bit more interesting I'm also chamfering off a tiny bit so there's a bit of smooth angle on the wall completely unnecessary apart from the fact that it might look kind of nice so doing it by eye just with a scalpel blade across Proxon one day I mean, across the doing it by eye with a scalpel blade across the phone one day I really must just buy a Proxon and do this kind of thing but and again by eye I'm just placing it onto the foam uh, try and line up top and bottom taking flat headed dressmaking pins going right through and pinning that in place the cool thing about this kind of pin is the head's so small you can kind of push them in real far and just lose them when a texture seal the styrene shortly with mod podge i'll be able to lose those totally inside the wall okay so that is now the roof hopefully he's gonna sit on top Ta -da, like that doesn't need anything else to hold the roof on uh, the walls the lips now are quite low so I probably am going to um, by the time I stuck these bits of square section on which look cool I'm going to use more of that um, round section bolster to have some round tops to these as well that'd be kind of cool and then I'm going to make the, the bit that goes in the middle with the tower light coming on we're nearly finished the main structure is good. Okay, these are the four walls for the uh, uh, bit on the roof. And like I said, I'm, I'm not going to um, have that bit accessible. So I'm sticking windows on the outside. Nice shutters. And the door is sunk into the polystyrene. I'm going to let that glue go off. I'm going to stick those together. I'm going to put a little roof on it. I'm going to stick a cupola on the top. And that is pretty much the construction of the actual building done. Um, then after that, it's a case of seal it uh, and then painting it. Um, so, wish me luck. It's all going very well. All right, so now, where are we at? Stuff all over the desk, it looks really terrible. Um, well, we know we've got the first floor done. There we are. That's not bad. Still got to fill in around a few holes, mind you, around around the windows. Um, and uh, oh, this is the roof. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I set this bit, this tower, a bit back because 
when I put it in the middle, there wasn't really enough room to get models all the way around the outside of it. You could get 30 millimeter base models, but anything 40 or 50 millimeter base wasn't gonna fit, so I set it back on one side and now big beast is a 50 millimeter Rochelle figure on the base. That fits all the way around there. That's kind of cool. So that's right. Um, and I've cut into the top the hexagon, cut into the top of that so the cupola, 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 I don't know how you say that word, will sit nicely on the top like that. All right. Um, now, what I'm doing at this point is now kind of troubleshooting some of the gaps. Uh, because of the nature of cutting this stuff, it's really difficult to cut this without getting slightly uneven bits. So what I'm doing is uh, uh, making some bits that are going on, like the wall that overhangs the lip here, that covers up any gap between the... Wait! <laughs> Don't hold that bit, Tim. It hasn't fully stuck on yet. <laughs> There we go. Somebody said the other day they like to see me leave the stupid bits in. There we are. So the lower lip on this wall here hangs over the top of the uh, first floor, which means that covers up any gaps that you might get. Um, that's the problem with making a model in multiple layers is you end up with visible gaps between the layers that you, when you lift off. So this lip of this wall hangs over that. And then I've got a similar problem. Um, Oops, with the first floor and the ground floor. Uh, all the best will in the world, you end up with a gap like that. Now in some ways, it's a scratch build model one, that's fine, but in other ways that really gets on my way. The other thing is, is the fact that these flush ends, were, which are cut on the XPS foam, they're not textured, um, which would be a pain in the bum. So what I'm thinking of doing is adding a wood um, I was going to use, I've, I've been experimenting with different things. I had tried cutting some more XPS foam to hang over the edges, but that was going to make it look really bulky and you'd have this really big lip, lip all the way round for no particular reason, which would look a bit weird, I think. Um, I tried it with some triangular section bolster that I was going to do the same kind of thing with, but then that was going to look a bit odd too. Uh, in some ways it might look alright, but so I think I'm going to do is just use thin strips of balsa wood um, that will be fairly flush, it will cover up this 10mm here and hang over the top of here by 3 or 4 mils as well um, that will again hold, help hold the first floor in place and B it will cover up any of those spaces which are, um, would just annoy me as a, a model maker so I think that's what we're going to do. It will also give a different, slightly different texture of surface to paint uh, a, a contrasting colour around the whole thing when I paint it. So um, uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make some strips that are going to be about 15 millimetres wide uh, that I can use to put on the first ground to first floor. And then the actual construction, I might do something similar with the little towery bit at the top which also needs a bit of trimming and fitting uh, but then the construction is pretty much done I need to seal it um, get some uh, Mod Podge and probably mix some black acrylic paint into the Mod Podge um, that will uh, Act then as a primer, I could prime and seal it all in the same go, which would be kind of neat. Um, then when that's fully dried, uh, with the exception of, I'll probably still want to spray the bits with the windows and stuff, otherwise they're going to look a bit weird if I mop up them. And when that's, that's fully dried then I can paint it. So we're actually making really good progress with this model. Uh, I don't know how long this video is, but going to end up being but I don't think it's going to be as long as the first one um, so half right I don't know why I flipped this ruler over onto imperial measurements so I'm doing this five eighths of an inch this wooden strip I'm going to be putting all the way round uh, 
the first floor ground floor gap should do the trick I hope several marks marks on there measure twice cut once that's probably fine so here we are finished model well construction is pretty much finished several layers roof little box room on the top the tower that is not accessible I haven't made that possible put miniatures in it uh, and the cupola at the moment lifts off it's undercoated that already um, then the first floor the main meeting room in it holes at each end for the uh, rose windows to go in all the other doors are solid there underneath and then ground floor cover market staircase at the back so to paint this there normally I well, and I prime everything black normally when I paint stuff. Use spray cans, but of course you can't do that with the XPS foam. Uh, if I use this stuff on XPS foam, it will dissolve. So I need to prime it otherwise. So normally when I prime XPS foam, I have to seal it first of all with Mod Podge glue, which is going to be painted over the entire model. But uh, in this case, I'm going to mix Mod Podge with black acrylic. Um, that way, that hopefully the model will get primed at the same time as it gets uh, sealed. I'm not going to prime, seal everything and do that because apart from anything else, yeah, I mean all the brickwork. Well, see how we go. That will make putting paint on easier and all the rest of it. I'm not going to paint onto the doors and windows with uh, the primer PVA and acrylic primer. I'll spray those when everything else is black and completely dry. So I'm going to mix this up and get painting. Right, here's the model all in black uh, and its constituent parts. I've uh, left the cupola off so I could paint that individually. Roof with tower there. First floor with meeting hall. And then ground floor marketplace. So I think I'm going to start with the ground floor marketplace. It's going to be most straightforward. Uh, Greys are going to go with on all the stonework um, and then uh, I think most of this is going to be just white lime wash for this building we're going to try and keep it fairly similar the strip around uh, the uh, first floor I'm probably going to paint it in a blue so we get a bit of colour onto this uh, but yeah I'm going to keep this a relatively straightforward paint job so we can get through it get it done fairly quickly and just get it uh, to Ant and get it on the table. Oh, of course, though, we will get to this bit, which is going to have a brass top, uh, bronze top, and then uh, verdigris and stuff on it. So, see how we go. So, I need paints first of all. We're going to go for Mechanicus Grey on the base and then uh, work up from that. <laughs> right, uh, let's do that then. Uh, of course, it's got an inside and an outside, which means more painting to do. Uh, and I'm probably going to do the. Um, the bricked up wall bit, leave that, well it is bare, you can see the bricks, so I'm going to do that in a, in a in a red brick kind of light thing, which would be kind of cool. Okay, so I've got some basic, starting to get some basic um, base coats on. There we go, rock stuff coming on, so we're kind of into the painting process now. Uh, this is mostly going to end up becoming like lime washed white, they'll give you some blue bits, I think I'm going to do the window frames. Maybe in a blue or white, but I've got my cupola to the point where I've painted it a kind of bronzy colour. And now is a really, really good time for me to try out this stuff. Dirty down, verdigris. Now, you may uh, be aware of this stuff. Dirty down rust. Um, I used that in my last um, build. The paint on rust stuff. It's amazing. I described it as kind of like witchcraft in a bottle. Kind of cool. So I'm going to try out this verdigris stuff now. The first thing you've got to do is I'm kind of like give it a good shake because somewhere in there there is a metal ball. I can hear it roll. It's very liquid but there's also a metal ball in there, a ball bearing that helps to activate the paint. There it goes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
There we go. Got a use of verdigris on. I can't even open it. Blimey. On my roof and see what happens. It smells just like the the dirty down rust. I'm going to use a tiny little dribble, dribble that I'm going to paint on neat. We're going to see what happens. So I need a brush. What I'm doing with this, I've used this completely neat. I've just put a load in the lid. I've never used this before. I don't know what it's going to turn out like. Um, the dirty down rust was amazing. So... And I'm literally just going to paint on dirty down verdigris, and then I'm going to um, leave it to dry. So um, now the nature of this 3D printing model means that it's got layers. So as I paint it on, it's kind of like spreading out along the layers. I'm mainly going down. I'm going down the ridges here. Um, I'm just going to see. I've never really studied verdigris an enormous amount. I just know it makes stuff go kind of green, metals and stuff. So I pour, put some around the base. Replaces. Let's see how well it turns out. I don't know if I've put it on a put it on a very good base coat. But then, you know, it's got to be a metallic base coat because that's what coat gets verdigris on it. So. Let's see how it goes. See what it looks like. Spreading it along the edges. Can we even see that? Yeah, we can. Uh, it might be that it needs several coats. Might be a cool to me. Keep this not a very good base colour in the first place. Maybe it needed to be more metallic, more silvery. Don't know. Let's see what happens. Give it time to dry. Uh. Otherwise, it's just an inky kind of wash, which will still look kind of cool. But, um, yeah, it might end up needing several coats. Don't know. The Adventures of a Weathering Man. Uh, and if this looks shit, I apologise in the first place. Right from the get go. Okay, I've painted it on. I'm going to leave that for an hour or so. Try some thicker bits in some places, see what happens there. Put it on once, and put it on around the top. I haven't diluted this at all. Maybe that's what I need to do, I don't know. Put it on pretty heavy there. Let's see what happens when it's on pretty heavy. Of course it will spread out down the lines of the... <sighs> okay, well let's leave that and see what happens. If he ends up looking a bit crap, I'll just paint over the top of it. Yeah, you know. Um, how far have I got? Well, um, it's taken several evenings so far. Let's just take this apart and let's have a look step by step. So, we have ground floor. Uh, stonework done. And the ground floor... So far, it's been it's had a black undercoat. It's been painted with um, what do we got? Uh, more grass bone, and then a wraith bone on top of it. And it's then going to get a white 
dry brushed over that. I'm liking the brick insert in the back, that's pretty cool. So that's quite nice. Uh, the first floor, it's had that same Morgoth bone and uh, Wraith bone. Uh, then uh, McCrag blue on this band that's going to add, I think it's going to have quite a nice uh, strip of colour to the whole model. I don't want it to be super colourful. I'm getting, I can't get my head around some of the, the other kind of Harley models I've seen that are like really red, really yellow. Um, so I'm going for a bit of a plain, um, understated paint job on this. Although if Ant wants to change it himself, it means it would be nice and easy for him to change. Inside the main room, uh, I have um, painted the uh, floor. Several different dry brushes of different browns there, and the walls are a pale blue, which is McCrag and uh, Wraith Bone mixed together. So that's coming on. I haven't dry brushed the stonework outside on the balcony yet. Um, or I've painted the windows. The windows and doors are going to match the blue strip around the outside, I think. Then the first floor, because it's several bits, um, the balustrade's painted. I've got a base coat. Again, on the stonework on the top, I haven't painted the tower, and I'm not really happy with the tower. Uh, I've been a bit lazy with that. It's okay, um, but it needs filling, really. Um, and then here's the cupola, which I've had l some success with the verdigris paint so far. It's coming out quite well in some places, but in other places it's too dark. And I don't know whether that's because I've laid it on thick or not thick enough, or whether I needed to water it down, or... So I'm gonna I'm gonna persist with that. Keep going, see if I get a bit more verdigris to it. It hasn't struck me as being quite as cool as the uh, uh, the rust from Dirty Down. Uh, but maybe I, I don't know whether that's the variables. I don't know whether that's the um, base coats I've got underneath it, or all kinds of things like that. But still, it's it's pretty grey and green, green, and it will look kind of cool. I think when it's done. So. Um, so we're going to carry on painting really, see how we go. I'm going to start base coat or do more on the, the, the top, work my way down I think. Um, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. Oh then I've got to sort out the stained glass windows. <sighs> yeah, another job. <laughs> right, well I reckon I've probably got one painting session left now. Um, and this is where we're at. I've just got to do the details. I haven't done, for example, uh, whoop, here we go, the stained glass windows. Uh, and I've got to do some highlights on the doors and window frames and put some details on there. But it, I'm really quite pleased with this. I, it is a pretty basic paint job, but um, I think that will look nice in the middle of a table. It looks pretty cool so far. Hang on a minute, let's find a big gribbly. It looks pretty cool with fingers on, um, and yeah, I think it's going to do quite well. So, one more paint session can leave everything that I've painted tonight, and then hopefully one more session, and it will be done. And then, um, yeah, hopefully one more session will be done, and then I'll be able to move on to the next bit. That's pretty cool. So I'm, I'm quite enjoying this. I'm pleased with how it's coming out. Okay, back from Kenilworth Castle, doing stuff, finishing off. Many apologies that this hasn't got finished ages ago. What we're we doing tonight? Painting stained glass windows, or just the window frames, and then trying. Just going to put a couple of washes on the blue on my tower, on your bugger, just to put a bit of detail on the blues in the doors. Going to do some Agrax Earth Shade because I can't find the fucking known oil. Um, and then uh, it needs some metal work doing on it. It's kind of it, but yeah, just got some definition because these are quite nice printed doors. So, it cracks a, a shade on the top, and then I'm almost certainly going to have to highlight doors again, but this will give it dirty colour. I can't decide how dirty uh, Venice needs to look. Quite a few of these boards I've seen look quite clean. <sighs> There's not enough clutter in the streets. Difficult because you don't want a game to look like Mordheim. If you want a game to look like Mordheim, play Mordheim, you know. But 
It is a busy street, and anybody who's been to Venice or even seen Venice or knows of Venice nowadays knows that it's a bit manky. So, um, yeah. So there you go, because there's shade on the shutters, on the windows. And then I'll go back over it when that's dry. Bit of a dry brush. Should help with a bit of definition. Again, not very complicated from a paint job point of view. But less flat colour that one. Fucking disaster! Broke a bit of it! It's gonna require repair jobs, that is. Alexa pause. Fucking disaster. Just broke a bit. Arseholes that's gonna need repla repairing. Ah, oh, the trials and tribulations. I've dropped a bit. Something else on it. Shit, it's broken in two places. And I didn't do that bit, mate. I haven't broken it at all. Seriously, I'm bald. Okay, however, what we'll do there is we'll wield the uh, Gorilla Woodworking Glue and that will be then stronger than the actual XPS phone. So it won't all be bad, but... God damn, just when you think it's all going well and you're nearly finished. Another setback. Hey-ho. Oh, four, blimey. Okay, we're very nearly there. Um, over here. Got bits now where there's a wash. A Grax Earthshade just uh, drying off on that. And those will need a bit of highlighting. And uh, the windows down here are now white. Although I'm thinking I should have done a blue to go with the rest of it. But the key bit about that is going to be the stained glass. So the last bit, when they're dry, I'm going to have to find some suitable plastic possibly recycle the uh, cases that the uh, the base is coming cut out a circle stick it uh, that's going to go on the back of one of the windows and then get some overhead projector pens which are permanent colors you could probably do it permanent with fine sharpies and then sit and color in the bits behind i'll show you that bit in a moment and then that will be pretty much the whole thing done Finally, which is good because we've got a lot of other things to get on with, so nearly, nearly there, nearly there. Only the odd incident have wielded the Gorilla Glue and is now repairing the model. And uh, we're not going to mention that again, are we at all? No, you fuckers mentioned this in the comments and I won't talk to you again ever. Well, I probably will, but you know. Hey ho, these things happen. Um, Maybe in the future, I'm getting a new workshop. Uh, it'll be bigger and better. I'll have more space to spread things out and have less played services for things to be piled up and all over the place. We shall see. Um, anyway, yeah. i going to stop now and wait till this stuff is dry. My windows are white. <laughs> oh, so it's certainly white enough to go in the morning. <sighs> okay, my windows are white. Certainly white enough to go in the model. Although... I should have done blue really, but then, yeah, this stone. I've now taken a piece of acetate and cut. No, I haven't cut anything. I've drawn two black circles. I basically drew away on a window with a permanent pen. I'm now going to take a pair of scissors and going to cut out the window if at all possible. This I'm going to super glue to the back of one of the windows. With light dabs of super glue. Not that I'm making this up as I go along, but I am making that this up as I go along. Won't need much. Uh, my plan. So we're going to sandwich this in between two parts of a window eventually. Before I do that. So that then. We'll go behind the window there, you can't see that. Can you see that side? There we go, that's going to go on there. I'm going to super glue that into place. Then on the, this side, I'm going to colour in using permanent overhead projector pens, which I've had for years. Um, then I'm going to glue another window to it and then stick that in the model. 
That's my plan, so all I need is time dabs of super glue. Uh, let's try that. I'm actually going to put the super glue onto something else so I can dab it with fine, not a cocktail stick or something, otherwise, it'll be too much. I'll stick it on and we'll have a look, see in a second. Okay, I don't know how well we can see that. Hang on, I'll put it on a white bit of tissue. There we go. Colours! Then we'll turn it over. Show up better, I think, actually, against the colours! Greens and reds and oranges and purples and stuff. Quite subtle. <coughs> I'm going to stick another window piece on the back of it. Leave it to dry. I'm going to stick it in the model. Hot damn. I mean, it's not like I've done anything complicated. There are no complicated pictures or anything else. It's just colours filling in. Just colours filling in the, the different bits of window. But what is cool is when these things go in, they do look very nice. Bit of wind, bit of light behind them, or even a light inside maybe okay here we go stained glass window hang on let's put some white again white behind it I don't know if that's going to make a difference yeah nice one side there and the other side this model is just about done rather pleased I guess to put it all together oh no I've got to paint the handles and the good the Hinges on some doors, and then, and then we will be finished. Yeehaw! And there you go, it's finished. <laughs> um, they took a little while longer than I thought it was going to. Mainly the actual making of the model, the building of the model. If I had a straight run at it, wouldn't have been very taken very long at all finishing it off because most of it was done last time. Um, the problem has been work and life. Uh, it's all going away. Uh, this close, this close I was to getting this all done before I had to go away and do a, a eight day Halloween stretch with my monster hunting crew. This bunch of people at Kenilworth Castle, we had a great time. Um, that was really cool and then that kind of like ran and ran around and it was really great and but you know when I'm way doing that kind of thing I can't be in the workshop. Um, so it took a little while to get back and get it done and underway. But the model is now complete. I'm really very pleased with it. I'll just take you some uh, Carnivale figures off. Unpainted Carnivale figures. Well, a couple of painted ones. This is it. Now, underneath there are a couple of market stalls that uh, aren't going with the model, but here we go. Got to say, I'm rather pleased with it. It is 12 inches by 12 inches by pretty much 12 inches, a little bit over maybe. Um, it comes apart in two separate pieces. The cupola is not stuck on, so models can get put under there nice and easy. Although, obviously, we'll have to be careful when playing. Then um, the roof, uh, there's the roof section. Uh, the This little room here is solid, you can't get in that. Then there is the first floor with the rather lovely stained glass windows very pleased with. Uh, plain room inside, but that's fine. This it doesn't look like the kind of game where you do lots of inside anyway, so from that point of view, um, I, I reckon there's opportunity there, especially if it gets used for other games. And then the ground floor, uh, which is actually, like I said at the moment, featuring some market stalls uh, that I've used for other games. Uh, that nice bit of bricked in wall at the back, it's kind of cool, I like that. Uh, and the stairs that go up to the first floor. So actually, yeah, a, a, a nice model. Lots of openness, lots of open kind of area to play. Uh, made specifically so um, big creatures from Carnivale, the 50mm base creatures like um, this Rashar crab dude whose name I can't remember. Brachier and him, I think. Um, him, uh, you know, he can get into most of that, which is pretty neat. So, yeah, I'm rather pleased with the whole thing. So, and I really hope you, you, you're cool with this. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, you getting it, getting it on the table, getting some figures on it. Um, yeah, it was, it was good. <coughs> what am I not so happy with? Um, well, I didn't think the uh, dirty down. 
verdigris was as good as a dirty down rust. That might be, might be because of the way I yeah, applied it, put it on. And so I need to do more experimenting with that. It has in places gone verdigree and in other places not so much dark and stained and horrible, which still works really, really well. Um, I'm very happy with that. Could have been a bit better, but I, I'm gonna have to experiment more with that on other models and bits and pieces, see how it works out. So, so there you go. That is my Carnivale build uh, for Patreon. There are a couple of other bits there that I, I you know, do it again. I've learned, I've learned quite a lot. I'm happy with those STLs I found for doors and windows on this model, and they've come up really nice and simple uh, with a base coat and a wash and just a dry brush. Nice, nice, simple paint job. Yeah, you could probably make do them even fancier, but uh, from this point of view, it looks great on the tabletop as it is. So, uh, there we go. Uh, that's my Patreon build. Um, I can't remember how many times I said whimsy in this video, so let's just get a couple in before the end of the, uh, the before we go. Uh, so yeah, it is a whimsical build. I've looked at a lot of Venice. Venice is a very whimsical looking city in some ways, uh, but the buildings are kind of ordinary. Um, I've gone for an ordinary kind of color and from a paint job point of view, uh, I might experiment with my own in the future with some other colours so the, the board is a bit more colourful. Uh, but this one will make quite a nice centrepiece for a small gaming table, really pleased with it. Um, not super levels of whimsy, but then in Carnival, it's, it's the these guys that do that. I mean, look, it's a shark dude, right? Eating a dead bloke on the part that kind of like... On, on some kind of square or plaza or piazza in, in Venice. I mean, it's kind of, yeah. Um, yeah, funky. So, <coughs> this then was a Patreon build for a guy called Ant. Uh, Ant, I hope you like it. Patreon build, you say? What's a Patreon build? Well, uh, several times a year, my patrons who have joined me at www.patreon.com slash Magathea Builder um, uh, suggest I have a, a kind of competition. And the best suggestion for a piece of scenery gets made and gets given to that patron um, and in this case uh, this patron's going to come and collect it um, but uh, yeah it's 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 very very cool I, I like that if you want to join my patreon please do uh, if not if you just kind of want to support this channel um, then please do make sure you click subscribe that'll be really cool I'm um, always interesting it doesn't matter you know I'm not in competition with anybody but I like the idea of people subscribing and certainly do click and like and leave comments down below because that will be a really important kind of thing for me as well uh, where are we going now well uh, it's uh, just the end of the first week of November the workshop I'm sitting in um, is <laughs> getting taken down in three weeks time uh, and I'm going to be relocating to the build previous this used to be my workshop and then it moved over across the garden and now it moved back in here and now it's moving back across the garden I'm going to have a whole thing over there on the other side which is going to be my office and workshop which is going to be really neat um, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get at least one more build video in before this comes down and the new office the new work office is being built um, and then we'll see how we go so uh, probably another Carnivale project I've got a really cool idea for a Carnivale project which is going going to be um, Carnivale from the canals up. I think that's what I'm going to call it. Uh, or maybe Venice from the canals up. We'll have to see. Um, <clears throat> so that's going to be definitely on the cards. And then the other thing that's definitely on the cards in the near future. Well, two things really. First of all, as always, there's way too much to do. Um, this dude arrived. Judge Dredd, of course. Thanks, Luke. Um, Looks great. Now I have quite a large collection now of Judge Dredd painting figures. Uh, paint Judge Dredd figures, get them right way around. I need to make some Judge Dredd scenery so I can play that. That is definitely going to happen soon. Um, and I need to get on with some B&B &B stuff because we are um, going to be at Salute in April with a new B&B &B project and I've got a bunch of builders to build for that. So uh, watch this space. So. I hope you've enjoyed this first foray into Carnivale. Uh, there's definitely going to be some more because a couple of us have got some Carnivale figures now and we need some terrain. Keep your fingers crossed. We might actually be able to do some other videos before the end of the year uh, in my new workshop. Or my old workshop, I don't know. One way or another, thanks very much for watching Magrathea Builder World. I'll see you next time. All right, we'll have a quick peep at the model. <laughs>